Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy. Today I am going to be glazing some of the pieces I made for my New England sun porch here where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. have been bisque fired and I'm getting ready to apply some underglazes and I'm going to use my favorite method where I wipe on the underglaze and then I go in with a damp sponge and sponge it off and what that does is it'll leave color all in the spaces of where my texture is. Then the remaining parts will end up this lighter white color and I'll get this two-tone effect. All of these have been pre-sanded. I spent a little time earlier today sanding them and then I gave them a little bit of a washing. And the, the great thing about using underglazes is that my underglazes, especially this Mako brand, you can apply them to low fire all the way up through high fire and they are totally mixable just like regular paints are. It's not like a regular glaze. Regular glazes are specially formulated so that if you mix them, sometimes it really messes up the colors and they don't really blend well. Things can get runny. But with underglazes, they're just basically colored clay, so you can mix them all up just like you would paints. If you are just experimenting with underglazes and you just want to try and get into it and not buy a whole bunch of colors, I recommend maybe just getting a set of primaries because you can go ahead and mix them and create your own colors along the way. For this environment, I'm going to keep the pitcher and cup set with my green tones, my light green tones, because again, this environment is themed to the life cycle of a leaf. And then for the vase to give me a little bit of contrast, I'm gonna go with a deep red. And the planter, I'm going with this mahogany brown, so it should be a little bit darker, a little bit more woodsy fit with the tree texture that I have going on here. In a couple days, I'm gonna be headed to campus where I'm gonna apply a layer of a top coat, which is just a clear coat, and fire it up. And I will try and shoot some footage of that so I can get that in here as well. I keep moving these things around and so it's a good time to jump in here and tell you what happened. As you can see, I had total disaster with the glazing part of this. Um, the glaze that I used completely ran and stuck to the shelf and ruined the bottoms of these pieces. Same goes with these cups. The only thing that really was okay was the planter, so we're gonna keep that and that's gonna be fine. This is how it works in the ceramic world. Usually I make several extra pieces of things because you never know what's gonna happen. Part of it was the fact that I used a glaze that I was unfamiliar with, and the other part of it was also the kiln I was unfamiliar with. It was a brand new kiln. I should have known better. Uh, I'm trying another round. What I ended up doing is I went ahead and I created four more pictures, one that's still kind of of this theme, and some other options. I have fired them up through the bisqueware. I am starting to glaze them, and I also went in and threw a bunch more cups, and I'm gonna do the same thing with those. While I was doing that and waiting for things to dry, I did mess around and make some cool things. I was gifted terracotta raw disc that was bisque, it's something used to warm your bread. So you heat it in the oven and you throw it into a bread basket and it warms your bread. I thought it would be cool to make some clay to canopy versions of those, and I had a cookie press made on a 3D printer earlier in the year, so I used that to press into some porcelain, and it's some point I probably will have a giveaway. I also went ahead and made some pie crust weights. I always wanted a set and because it's me I had to make textured ones of course. I've never seen textured ones out there so I always had it in my head that I was gonna make some.
right now what I'm about to do is pack up the new round of pitchers and keep my fingers crossed that they are all well and good and they make it where they're going. And then I am going to do the thing that I probably should have done the last time. I'm going to make a kiln god because that's what you're supposed to do. I'm going to do a low fire for those plates that I glazed because it is a low fire slip. And then these pitchers and the cups are going into high fire. So I will need two kiln gods, goddesses in my case, we'll make them goddesses for the firing tomorrow. And we will hope that the gods will be with them. It will not be a full moon, so we will be good for firing. That was the other really big mistake. It was a full moon. Um, and I should have known better. An old friend of mine, she always swore by never firing on a full moon and I fired on a full moon anyway and that's what happened. Maybe it is superstition and <laughs> maybe it was just a bad glaze. Thankfully, the firing went really well. The pitchers made it out. So have the cups and the dishes and a couple of those other things that I made and I'm gonna get to the big reveal of all of these objects in just a moment. But before I get to that, I do need to put some handles on these pitchers. I have some faux leather braided strapping, and then I have some vinyl. I have a sheet of copper, some thread, of course my sewing machine. I will be using also some wood for the handle part itself. Of course, I'm just winging it. I'm just gonna go for it, throw a handle on all of them, and then have another vote. We'll throw these up on Insta. You can comment on this video as well. As long as it is before the big reveal, you can have at it with a vote of which one you think looks better with the cups and the dishes and you know the whole ensemble on the table. everybody the handles are on and here are my finished pictures now I'm gonna go ahead and throw up the pictures of these on my Facebook and my Instagram so if you're not following me there please go ahead and do so you can also vote on the comments of this video as well vote for the, your favorite one that you think will look best in the environment whichever one gets the most votes will become the piece that ends up in the big reveal now before I end this video I do have all the rest of the pieces that did survive the glazing so I'm gonna just go over what those look like really quickly so I'm really happy with the way that these plates turned out I think that they're just gonna accent everything really well. I didn't want too much of a strong design on them. I just wanted something a little bit more simplistic. I have these bread warmers. I made a whole bunch of these pie weights and I made four different textured ones because I couldn't help myself. I must have something with texture. And then I have these tags, kind of like ornaments. I was going a little crazy that day with my logo. They're probably not going into this environment. They were just something fun to do while I was waiting for things to dry. So I thought I'd show you what those turned out to be. One last thing are the kiln gods. That first one survived. And then when this mandrake looking one got to campus, it survived. Everything was fine. It had its leaves on top. I closed the door to the kiln. It fell over and all of its leaves fell off. And then I thought that was a really bad sign, so I quickly made another kiln god. Lucky I did, because it turns out I ended up having to do two separate firings, only one of the kilns was working. This one sat in for the first round, was totally successful, and then I had to go back, unload, and reload, and that's when I made the second kiln guard, threw them all in, and then that second batch was successful. I'm gonna call it here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and I hope to see you soon.